What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be showing you a quick tip on some ways to get larger scale looking smoke inside of Blender once you have created your explosion utilizing chaos. This video is not an end all solution to creating your materials for your explosion simulations, but it should help you get an idea of what different domain material settings can offer you for the simulation that you are working with. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender and as you can see here, our scene is compromised of three metropolitan buildings and we have created an explosion here at the bottom of the one in the center of our scene. It's a pretty simple explosion. We used chaos to add a few omnidirectional smoke fire operators to our scene here and then added a concrete debris field as an omnidirectional operator as well to bring everything together. And to give you an idea of what this explosion will look like in preview mode, we'll just go here to view and view animation. And as you can see here, this is what the preview of our explosion looks like playing back in real time. Anyways, if we zoom into our explosion here, we can see that there is a good amount of detail in the smoke and fire here in our preview material. And if we select our smoke domain here and go to the physics tab on the right, you can see that we have baked our explosion with a resolution division of 330 and even a high resolution noise up res factor at four. And uh, this up res factor is actually way more than what I would usually use for a distant blast, as you can see for the camera angle that I used for this specific animation. But I just wanted to show you that I added a lot more detail than I thought was necessary for the camera angle preview that I showed earlier. So a lot of the time we have a pretty nice looking simulation, but when we go into rendered view, it can get a little bit discouraging as it might not look as good as we expect it to be from the preview of our smoke and fire. So one thing I like to do when I get stuck here is go to some reference imagery. So I did a basic Google search on explosions and got these photographs here. And uh, as you can see, when we look closely at a lot of these shots, the dense smoke that is cutting up the flames and adding a lot of that detail effectively looks really nice. So how do we try to mimic this look without rebaking our simulation entirely and just by tweaking the material settings of our smoke domain? So let's just open up our shading tab here. And while our smoke domain is selected, we can change the look of our explosion simulation. So there are quite a few domain settings that come in the custom domain material that Chaos imports into your scene. You can change the color of your smoke, the density and contrast of your smoke in these here. And then we can adjust the color of our flames with these color ramps here, as well as how much our smoke surrounds the flames. And then at the bottom here, we can adjust the brightness of the flames through the multiply node and the brightness and contrast settings. And a lot of the time, what might work is simply increasing the value of the multiply nodes on both the density and heat attributes at the top and the bottom of our domain settings here. However, in this video, we're going to try something a little bit different to try and get the smoke to cut up the flames a little bit more like in our reference photos. So instead of just adjusting the multiply nodes of the density and heat attributes, we will also adjust their contrast settings. So first we will go here to the heat attribute and we will bring this value down to around four, which will make the flames a lot less bright. And then in addition to this, we will also change the contrast value of our flames to something higher, like 20. And this is going to increase the brightness of the brightest parts of the flames, but not affect as much of the darker attributes of the flames that aren't pushing through the smoke already. All right, so in addition to adjusting the multiply and contrast values on the brightness of our flames, we're also going to do similar adjustments on the density values of our smoke here. So we will go here to the multiply value of our density node here, and we will just decrease it to something like 40. And the reason for this is because when we increase the contrast value of the density, it's going to increase the amount of smoke in the most dense areas of the volume, creating a much thicker looking explosion. All right, so now let's go ahead and increase the contrast value of our density to something like 20. And now as you can see, the smoke is cutting up the flames in a more dense way for this frame. And we can see some of those dark patches in the bright spots of our flames, similar to the style that we saw in the reference explosions. So this is looking pretty cool here, but keep in mind that when you increase the contrast of the density of your smoke this much, it is important to check out how the smoke looks further in the timeline as it can produce some undesirable results. So let's just go back to layout mode really quick and select a frame later in our explosion. And then we will go back to the shading result and see how it looks rendered out later in the blast. And as you can see, the increase of contrast of the smoke in our domain settings is creating a really thick looking defined smoke, which might work, but it's also important to check as sometimes you may want to keyframe the value to come back down once the flames disappear so that you have some thinner wisps of smoke as well as compared to this very heavy cloud of smoke you can see here. 
All right, so this is one way you can increase some definition in your flames. But before we end this video, I wanna show you one more way to use this technique to get some more fire definition without increasing the amount of contrast in your smoke too much. So next, instead of increasing the contrast of the smoke density value, what we will do is we will actually increase the contrast of our flames a little bit more. So first we will go ahead and bring the contrast of our smoke back down to zero, and then we will actually increase the density value of our smoke to around 220, just so we bring a little bit of smoke back into our explosion here since we don't have the contrast as high. And then we will go to our multiply value controlling our flame intensity here and we'll just bring it down to two so that we can just barely see the flames pushing through the smoke here. And now to just push some more flames into the parts of the explosion where we see them right now, we can just increase the contrast value in our flames here. So we'll try something pretty high like 40. And now as you can see, we still have those little details in our fire, but we don't have our smoke that is quite as thick. And we're actually pretty close to this explosion right now in our preview window, but just keep in mind that the detail that we baked this explosion for was for this camera above our buildings here pushing down at it. And uh, if we just go to render view from this angle and distance from it, as you can see, it looks pretty cool. And once we add some glow and motion blur in compositing, it will look even better. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Keep in mind that of course you can use a combination of these techniques, so be sure to experiment with your explosion results. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next time.